Well, it is time for us to take a look at what's inside the Roundhouse Products box on the introductory build for a uh, steam locomotive from Kit. Uh, this is Bruce here, and if you followed my previous video, you knew that I had said an 060 is a good way to start. And that's what we have here. There's that uh, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe uh, 060. Um, <clears throat> die cast frame, plastic locomotive shell. The boxing is quite nice actually as you look at it. <clears throat> they even thought to put uh, a pull out easel on the back, <clears throat> excuse me, so that. Uh, the storekeeper could uh, set it up and uh, have it on display. But uh, let's see what's inside. <clears throat> that's it. Let's see. Got a package that has the open frame motor. And inside another sealed package with the side rods. And we will need that, obviously. Let's see what else we have here. I don't think there's anything else in here. Nope, that's it. So course we got the instructions. You can see that I've already had these out. Uh, it was starting to rip and I taped it. And um, what I try to do with my instruction sheets, since I'll be handling them quite a bit throughout the build, <clears throat> is to start by taking a photocopy of them to preserve the original somewhat. So that's uh, exactly what I did. Put these back in the box here. So that they don't get any uh, the worse for wear. And uh, we'll grab the, the actual instructions that I had photocopied here. And Looks like I'm going to have to uh, take a screw out here to take this apart. We'll get my screwdrivers. I said in my previous video that you rarely see uh, Phillips head screws, but indeed this kit has got uh, Phillips head screws. So I'm glad that I have uh, a couple of Phillips head screwdrivers anyway. Take that out. And carefully get this out of the frame here. Is there anything else holding that in other than pressure? think so. It's a heavy weight we got in there, that's for sure. And there's the uh, frame. It's interesting, the uh, Cylinder casting in, uh, is plastic on this kit. They are often also die cast rather than plastic. <coughs> but the main frame is indeed uh, die cast. And I can tell you right now that 
they have those wheels set in there, I guess, for display and marketing, but uh, they're not running as smoothly, as, especially the center set, as uh, you would wish, because there is flash that's interfering with the, uh, the gear here, and I think I can zoom in and you can see it. If you look at the uh, <clears throat> this piece here, there's a piece of flash stuck there, and there's also a piece of flash right here that's interfering with the gear. So we will continue the disassembly, get it down to its starting position of all the parts. In uh, earlier versions of this kit, they were not packaged, partially assembled like this. Alright, let's set that a... Take the screws out. And this has to be cleaned up a little bit. Front wheel. Trying to... See how they have one side uh, insulated, and uh, again, I don't know whether you can are going to be able to see this or not on the video. But uh, <clears throat> on this one, uh, there is no insulation between the uh, the frame and the tires of that wheel, and on the other side. You can just see a little layer of a darker uh, color. Let's just see if you can see that or not. But that, that side is insulated. We need to keep track of what the insulated side is. And uh, that is indeed how we're going to have to do that. Just by looking for that little bit of insulation. <coughs> so not much cleanup necessary on the underframe. They have already given it a coat of paint, but that's not going to stop me from cleaning up a little bit of flash uh, in the areas that uh, I see some, like over in here. And uh, when I'm done and the, it exposes some uh, metal, I'll just have to hit it again with. Uh, some black paint because you don't want to leave that uh, that flash there and you can see by just lightly running my flat file over it where it's picking up the flash on the edges where you would expect and that's a lot better already Do the opposite side because there's flash in those same places. This is actually quite minimal compared to some underframes that I've seen. Get the larger surface area of the 8 inch file instead of the 6 inch file. Let's see what we're doing here. There we go. Uh, for the most part, all right. Now we're going to want 
to test each of the wheels and make sure that they are running fairly smoothly in their positions. And for the most part they are. The center one I felt just a little bit of binding and uh, I think what I'm going to use for that is that uh, drill bit. Just run it back and forth here. And then we'll see if that it actually did the job. And you can just see that it just took off a little bit of flash that was down in there. You want to try to get these uh, wheels running absolutely free before we start adding any side rods or anything else to uh, to the kit and uh, that's what we did so um, now we got to just clean up that flash that I originally saw here on this bottom plate And there is flash inside where the gear was. We saw that. So that's going to require a smaller file. Flat file. Coming out quite easy. And there we go. Put those two back in temporarily a minute and just see how this rolls. Still getting a little binding in that center wheel. So I am going to, the others are doing fine. This one, I still don't like it's catching a little bit. So I'm going to work a little bit more on that and we'll be back. So, some time later here, I've um, been thinking more and more about the fact that this uh, frame was painted and I had mentioned earlier that I thought maybe uh, Roundhouse had done it to, you know, make it look prettier on display and then uh, I looked at this somewhat contemporary 060 from Roundhouse and see that the frame is not painted, which once again led me to think that perhaps um, a previous owner had painted this which might make more sense because there was paint down in each of these three cavities where the axles go 
and those are pickup points for uh, electricity to the motor. So uh, putting that all together, what I did off camera was uh, treat this as if it was an unpainted uh, uh, frame and uh, went at it more vigorously um, with a flat file taking off uh, any roughness whatsoever and uh, got down into those uh, axle uh, spaces and let's see if you can see this. I got rid of all the paint that was in there. I think you can see the shininess on it, but let me... So all the paint is down now out of those uh, areas where they shouldn't have been in the first place. So uh, that file work I did uh, off, off camera and uh, as we put these wheels into place and just spin them, I think you can see that uh, we are oops, getting progress here in, the, in that they're all pretty well freewheeling now. So happy with that. Uh, gave the uh, base plate a very good sanding. Uh, best way to do base, uh, base plates is to just put them on a piece of uh, 600 grit and uh, circulate them around and they get nice and smooth. So with all of that being said, um, we can proceed on to next steps. Well, uh, this is uh, day two. I stopped yesterday because the uh, battery on my camera was uh, dead and I had painted the uh, side of the underframe where I had uh, uh, done some filing so I just touched it up quickly and let that dry. <clears throat> While I was doing that I did open up the packet of little pieces uh, for the uh, assembly of the uh, locomotive and I went sorting through it and from what I can tell and this was sealed but from what I can tell missing from this is the number board which is a brass turning. I'll have to fashion something myself. But everything else seems to be there. <coughs> the other thing that was missing, if you look at the uh, diagram of the uh, valve gear, which is here, let me zero in a little bit on it and hope I remember to turn it back out. But if you look here, you can see that the, they have provisions for the valve reverse rod, which is made out of wire. Uh, that wire was not in the kit. And uh, it's non-functioning, it's just decorative, but I would like to add it. So I went searching into my other Roundhouse 060 kit, which is the version that has a tender. So that's this little guy here. Let me zoom back out now. That's this little guy compared to this one. But uh, pretty similar in, uh, in those regards. And indeed, <clears throat> in that box there was a piece of uh, steel wire um, that in that kit. Now I'm not sure, because I didn't read all the instructions in that kit, if this was for handrails or whether this was uh, for that uh, <clears throat> valve reversing rod. But what I did do <clears throat> was measure the uh, diameter of that and found out it was 0 0.020. So that gave me a good uh, guideline to go searching in my stash to see what wire I did have. And I really have two options. Um, one is the Detail Associates Brass Wire, and I think you can see that this is uh, 0.022 in diameter, which is uh, certainly close enough. And um, it's fairly well protected. It's uh, held on both ends, and uh, I think using brass wire instead of steel wire would be okay. So that's one option. And I looked at my piano wire selection, <coughs> my steel spring kind of wire. And this is from uh, K&S. And uh, 
I have some that's 0.025, so it's a little bit heavier, but could suffice too. So I do have uh, two choices um, to replace that, that p missing piece of wire. It's easy to see how this could um, slip out of the case because it is just in that inner sleeve. And these have been handled by uh, you know any number of people and it could very easily uh, slide out of the box. So I'm not very upset with that and uh, it's easily rectifiable. While I had the uh, two little 060 roundhouse kits out, I thought I'd look at some other differences. It's interesting to see how these kits evolved over time. Uh, on the one I'm building, um, we've already noticed that the uh, cylinder unit is made out of probably Delrin, <clears throat> you know, some, some type of resilient plastic. On the version that has the tender, uh, the valve gear assembly, uh, the cylinder assembly, excuse me, is still made out of uh, white metal, die cast white metal. And uh, the hanger on the, my little one I'm building on the tank engine, the hanger for the uh, uh, guide rod hanger uh, yoke is made out of Delrin. And uh, on this kit, it's again made out of white metal. So as, as time progressed, they, they went to more and more of the plastics, uh, which means that the tank engine was a newer kit than, than the other. Uh, the other thing I noticed was because they lightened up um, the front end of, of this tank engine by not having a metal um, cylinder unit, <clears throat> they've increased the size of the metal weight significantly. So here's, here's the metal weight inside this tank engine, and here's the metal weight that's provided with the uh, unit that has a tender. Uh, significant difference. So, uh, yeah, just interesting to see how things progress over time. Um, I like to paint the uh, underframe before I do a, an, a, an assembly of all the uh, side rods and uh, valve gear and so forth because I hate taking those off again once they're on to do the painting. So this is painted well enough now that uh, I can go ahead with the assembly. Um, I've got the next step is to put the side rods on. Those are brass stampings and like any metal stamping they have uh, some burrs on the underside um, and so the, when I return to the video because uh, I'm heading out to mow the lawn right now but when I return to the video we'll clean these up and we'll, we'll continue with the assembly. Well, another day, and uh, time to move forward here. Uh, actually, the first thing in the instructions that they suggest that you do is to insert this uh, plastic insulator uh, into the left hand of these two uh, holes on the top side of the uh, underframe. Eventually, that is going to be where you um, screw in a uh, screw that holds together the electric feeds from the uh, left rail that go up to the engine. You want it insulated from the frame since the, uh, the frame is, is carrying the, the juice from, uh, from, from here and you, you don't want it to short out. So they suggest that you tap it in and that job is done. The next step is to making sure that the uh, insulated side wheel of uh, the wheels are going to end up on the left side when you flip this over so they're on the far side now and uh, I've got these uh, working about as good as I'm going to get them so I'm putting a little oil here down in the, uh, in the bottom and I'm going to uh, put the bottom plate on and uh, move on to next steps. So we got that. 
little labels oil on there and put the base plate in place see if I can find my two little screws here they are and get those in place Never been known as uh, thimble uh, nimble fingers. I've been more known as fumble fingers. But uh, got to get these in place. Working good there. I'm going to put that on the track on the back where you can uh, just see them rolling on a track. Just roll that back and forth, and it's working quite well. So we're going to uh, put that aside. We have uh, the next step is to get the connecting rods and the main rods into shape to assemble, and. Uh, You know, these brass stampings on the uh, connecting rods are very rough on the back, so we need to uh, get all those burrs off of there. Uh, and then we get to start working on the main rods. So let me just quickly get the worst of it off with a, uh, a file here, a flat file. get the burrs off of here. We're not trying to take any reshaping or anything on that, but okay, now the other I am going to paint these, so I'm not too worried about any file marks. I think what I will do before assembly is uh, off screen do some some painting on these so they're a uniform color. In this case you have the connecting rods are brass, the main rods are white metal, um, the return rods that we have valve reverse rods are going to be probably brass wire. Get those all painted uh, the same uniform color. All right, so the worst of that is off, and now the best way to handle it from there is to take your piece of 600 grit, uh, get the connecting rods laying flat on it, and hope you can get a back and forth, not always the easiest, but a back and forth uh, movement across that. At the same time, it tends to uh, trim your fingernails down nicely. Yeah, that feels good. There we 
very good. Okay, so those are ready. I'll paint those up and uh, be ready for that. Now, when it comes to the main rods, there's a bit of flash. Um, see, the best thing to put this against might be this black background here. Piece of uh, wet dry paper. So, in the end of the uh, main rod, you have the um, half, I guess, of the uh, casting for the crosshead is molded right in. And in this U shape, there's a bit of flash on here. The rest of the rod is not uh, in bad shape, although I'll, I'll work on a, a little bit with a little bit of uh, sandpaper. But on the other half of the uh, um, crosshead castings, there's a loads of flash. And I'm just going to work on that off camera. Let's get this down where perhaps you can see it. So a lot of this stuff between these two sides has to come out as well as down here. Um, it's supposed to look like the letter H, uh, much the way uh, this is part of an H on, on here. So you, you got to get this shape here. Here's the other part of the H. This is supposed to be the other side of that uh, casting, like so. And there's just a tremendous amount of uh, flash in it. There's also flash um, on the rod itself where it's going to go into the cylinder assembly. So I will work on that um, off camera. And when you come back, they should be painted ready for assembly and in the next video in part two we will assemble um, uh, the valve gear and the uh, side rods and install the motor and uh, we'll be almost done all right I'll talk to you soon all right after a bit of uh, off-camera work I have the king necking rods nice and smooth and uh, they're ready to get painted, or test fitted and then painted, or vice versa. Uh, the main rods, all the flash is off, and uh, got those ready for assembly. And uh, down at the cross heads, I got the flash off, and you can now see that letter H shape that they were supposed to be. Let me see, make sure you can see that. Yeah, I think you can see that now. So all that flashes out and they're nice and smooth. Now you have to attach those to the end of the main rod. And there is a pin, uh, white metal, sticking out of the, uh, the end. And that goes into a hole on the end of the main rod. And now the idea is to pin that protruding pin over a bit, upset it. They don't provide a tool for that, so they are suggesting that you use a flat blade screwdriver. And uh, much smaller than this one of course, but simply put it into the end of that pin and then wrap it down to upset it. I do have the uh, tool that Bowser provides for riveting, so I'm going to use that. Um, it's helpful if you have a sturdy piece of steel or something like this to do this work on. Uh, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, <coughs> And if you haven't seen the other videos, I guess my question is, why not? Go check those things out. But anyway, um, I come from a long line of uh, woodworkers and metal workers. So when I asked my dad uh, for a solid piece of uh, uh, steel for me to use in my uh, model work, <laughs> he gave me this, polished it up nice. I don't know why those holes are in it, but that was that way. 
Um, so I am going to put the rivet tool on top of that shaft, give it a couple taps. What I don't want to do is get it so it's too, too tough. This is still going to come out, so I need to do it uh, a little bit more. But I don't want it so tight that it won't flex. Looking better. And I don't think that's going to come out. And it's moving back and forth pretty good. So that's now ready. So these will get mounted on uh, the rear driver. And uh, the piston goes in there and then it goes in and out and uh, so forth as the wheels turn. And it has to be able to go up and down just a little bit. So I would say this is just about perfect. Uh, this one here also moving up and down about the same amount so I think we're good to go and uh, in the next video I will um, <clears throat> maybe do a test fit first and then do the final assembly of uh, the side rods main rod and uh, valve gear so that'll be in video two uh, if you enjoyed the video uh, please give it a like um, once again, I urge you to uh, subscribe to my channel uh, so you know when the videos come out. And uh, I want to thank you for following along and uh, see you soon again. This is the paint, I think, by the way, that I'm going to use uh, on the main rods and side rods. It's uh, testers enamel uh, in a steel color. So I think there's probably what I'm going to use. So. Talk to you soon.